So thank you guys so much for being here. I am so excited to paint with you today. Um, just curious where everyone is from, if you could put into the chat where you're, um, where you're joining from. Milwaukee, Florida, um, Canada, Utah, Maryland, Kansas City, Houston, going so fast, <laughs> Saudi Arabia, <laughs> Toronto, Portland, Oregon, Vancouver, Los Angeles, oh, amazing, San Diego. Thank you guys so much. Ireland, South Carolina, Romania, Charleston. Awesome, wow, all over. It's so cool to see um, where people are from. That's one of my favorite things about teaching online like this is that you know people are able to join from everywhere. I just think it's it's so cool to be able to connect in this way and um, and do something like this together. So thank you. I also have another question for you guys. Um, if you could put in the chat, who all here has painted with watercolors before or who's a complete beginner, completely new, maybe never painted ever? Did the June just paint course, completely new. I make cards. I paint a bit on, um, did the course with you. Only use bar colors a few times, twice, six, seven paintings, completely new. Just taking your classes before, only on the tour. Hey, Shelby. <laughs> um, I've used bar colors a couple times, doing just paint course now. Currently doing the six week just paint. Ooh, I love to hear that. <laughs> Amazing beginner. I've taken some of your classes before, but still beginner. Okay, I'm so excited that you're here, especially the beginners and anyone coming back. I just think it is so amazing you've taken this time out for yourself today. And thank you so much for participating as well and you know going in the chat. It just makes the class a lot more fun um, and you know, like interactive, um, kind of chatting with you guys along the way. So feel free to ask any questions as we go. So I'll kind of jump in and get started here. For anyone who doesn't know me, I'm Lauren. I'm a watercolor artist and illustrator, um, and I'm the owner of Lauren Taylor Creates. I'm um, originally from California, but I live in Ireland now with my husband and our dog, Maya. Um, I've been a professional artist for about eight years now. Um, and I've been painting my whole life. It's something that I've always loved to do. Um, I am self-taught, which means I didn't go to formal art school, but I have done lots of um, workshops and classes and stuff from different artists I love and admire. So I just think it's so cool that now I get to kind of flip that on its head and offer um, classes myself. So I'm really happy that you're here. Um, I typically tend to paint a lot of nature inspired artwork, a lot of landscapes and botanicals. Um, that's kind of what I'm drawn to. And Ireland is a amazing source of inspiration for that. So I just love being here. So I don't know about you guys, but 2022 has not been feeling, you know, very like new year, new me <laughs> yet. Uh, I'm just kind of feeling like I want to just kind of ease into this year. There's a lot going on. Um, I feel like there's a lot on everyone's plates, um, you know, a lot of stress and stuff with, um, well, obviously <laughs> everything going on in the world. So, um, so I just kind of wanted to let this be an hour or so where you get to just take a bit of time out of your day and just relax and just have fun creating, especially if this is your first painting that you've ever done or, or you're new. I just want you to have fun with the process and not worry too much about getting exactly perfect. Um, that's not really what we aim for in Just Paint. We really kind of strive for um, enjoyment of the process over perfection. <laughs> so I definitely, um, I hope you take that away today. I hope that you're able to just kind of unwind, shake off your week and, and enjoy this class with me. All right. So today we are going to paint a beautiful crocus flower. If you saw, I think that's how you say it. Um, if you saw my Insta stories, I shared a picture of the painting and I'll show you guys my desk set up here in just a second. Um, I picked this flower because 
it's a kind of winter early spring flower which i thought was cool um i tend to like to paint things that are kind of seasonal and um so i thought it was fitting also uh pantone's color of the year is purple and these flowers are purple so i just thought it was very very fitting so let me just um let me just switch my screen and I'll show you my desk setup here. Everyone see my desk? Yes, 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 yes. Yep. Wonderful. And again, thank you guys so much in the chat, like for popping in there and um, and participating and stuff. It always makes it so much nicer um, to let me know what what you guys are able to see and what who you guys are. I just love to get to know people through this too these um lovely crocus flower i think that's how you say it <laughs> they're a beautiful kind of i think they come in like purple white and they have like a lovely um kind of orange middle and they're just so so pretty and i thought that they would be really fun to paint so the way today is going to work i'm going to go over my desk setup so if you're not fully set up don't worry um i'll talk about all of my different supplies and stuff. Let me just. So, um, I'll talk about my different supplies, and you can get your supplies out if you haven't done so already. And then I am going to break this painting down for you. So I'll paint it kind of slowly and step by step, so you're able to watch me paint it, and then I'll pause and allow you to kind of follow along. And I'll also answer any questions that you have as we go um, through the painting. So feel free to use the chat to put any questions that you have in there. You can also use the Q&A as well. And then at the end of the class, um, I'll tell you about a special bonus that we are running for just today. So let's dive in. All right, so like I said, I'll kind of chat through some of my supplies here. So first off, I have a block of paper. I like to use Arches cold press paper, 140 pounds, um, that's just, and 300 GSM. That's just kind of the, the thickness of the paper, really. And when I say a block, it means that it's glued on all four sides. You can see the black, this only has a few sheets left, so it's not very thick, but um, basically it's glued all the way except for this little tiny section here. So if I'm painting, um, it's especially helpful if I'm painting landscapes, um, you know, and you're, and you're kind of going from wall to wall with color um, and paint, then your paper will warp and buckle and stuff. And by having it glued down, on a board like this, um, it's not going to do that as much. It might do it a tiny bit, but it's not going to really do it. And then once the painting's fully dry, then you just take like the back of a butter knife and you just slice the, the top sheet of paper off and it should be relatively flat. So for this painting, because we're not going, we're not completely covering the paper, you know, there's no, um, if you don't have a block of paper like I do, if you're just using a loose sheet of paper or maybe a pad, um, that will be totally okay. You don't have to really worry about the paper warping or buckling. And for this class, I'm going to use my size 10 silver black velvet brush. Um, this is a round brush. It's my favorite brush. Um, the size 10 one is. It holds a lot of paint and liquid in it, and it still comes to a fine point, which is so nice. So I'm actually able to cover kind of a decent amount of area with this brush and still do tiny, tiny details. So the colors for today's class that we're going to use are going to be quinacridone magenta, cadmium red, cadmium lemon, cadmium yellow pale, and cobalt blue. If you don't have that, like all of these colors, that's totally okay. Um, Quinacridone magenta is kind of a, a pinky color. So if you have a pink or if you have a alizarin crimson, um, those colors would work instead of Quinacridone magenta. If you don't have both shades of yellow, just use one shade of yellow. I am all about using what you have. Now you can see I like to um, use tubes of paint like these. 
and I squeeze them out into my palette and I let it dry usually overnight. Um, just kind of let it dry out and then I'll paint with it. If you've just freshly squeezed your paint into your palette, that's totally okay. You can use it straight away. Just be mindful that it might, um, you might be picking up too much paint. Like the paint tends to be kind of sticky on the brush. So just be mindful of really mixing your brush into your mixing area um, to get that paint off your brush. Some of you guys might be using pans, like these kind of dried out little pans of paint come like in little squares like this. Um, and that's totally okay as well. I find that they tend to get um, a little bit, they're, they're just a bit more dried out. So I prefer tubes of paint. Um, and what I like to do, especially if you're using pans, but also if you're squeezing your paint out on your palette is I like to just spritz my paint with a little bit of water um, before, like about 10 minutes or so before I get started. So just kind of go like that. Or if you don't have a spray bottle, what you can do instead is just take your brush in your water, just scrape off some of the excess onto the sides of your glass and just run your wet brush over your, over your paint. And that just kind of helps wake it up. So I'm just gonna spray these colors. I'm not trying to get them soaked. I'm just trying to kind of, kind of get them going. And then the last supplies that I use are glasses of water. So I have two glasses of water here. Um, one is for my dirty, like my dirty water dish. And then my other one is my clean water dish. So one glass will be primarily used to rinse my brush off um, in between color mixes and things like that. You'll notice that this glass, like this glass gets quite icky <laughs> pretty quickly. Um, you know, cause we're like mixing a lot of different colors into it. And for a painting like this, like I came down here at the bottom of the painting with a bit of clean water for my clean water glass, just to soften some of these edges and stuff. And I, if I use the dirty water, you would be able to see it. It would leave marks. It would end up leaving pigment on the paper. So if you have a spare glass, um, you know, it could even be just a water glass and chucked in the dishwasher later. Um, I do recommend using two glasses if possible, or you can always just um, rinse your water out like part way through the class as well. And then lastly, I have some paper towels here. So paper towels or a sponge or a tea towel or something like that is really important for watercolor because that's gonna help you control the amount of liquid that is on your brush. So if you don't have paper towels out yet, I would recommend grabbing some or grabbing a sponge or, um, or a towel or something that you can use to just kind of blot off your um, color from your brush. Are there any questions on the supplies? Wonderful. All right, so we're gonna jump in and start mixing our colors. So go ahead and get your brush nice and wet. We wanna make sure the bristles are all nice and saturated. And then we're going to scoop water with our brush onto our mixing area. So the first color that we are going to mix is going to be our green. So I'm just going to basically load my brush up with water so that it's like dripping wet and then just drop that water into my mixing area using the sides, the edges of the mixing area to scrape the water off into my, into this area here. And so we're gonna do about four brush bowls of water. So I believe that was four. Do just one more little one for good measure, four to five. <laughs> it's always better to have a little too much paint mixed up. Um, so then that way you're not mixing up more paint halfway through your painting. All right, so now that I have my water in my mixing area here, I'm going to come into my cadmium lemon. This is a very bright and beautiful yellow. 
I'm just gonna load up my brush with pigment. So you can see there's quite a bit of pigment on my brush and drop that into my water. And again, just you can use the sides of, of the palette here to kind of scrape that pigment off into, into the mixing area. So when you rinse your brush, you're not just wasting loads of paint. And then I'm going to come into my cobalt blue and I'm going to do the same. So with a wet brush, just going to load it up with paint. Now, if you are using pans or half pans of paint, these are like quite dry. So feel free to really scrub out the paint. Your, your brush isn't very, um, they're not very delicate, you know, I'm, I'm not a very delicate person. So, and I've had these, like, especially if you're using um, a silver black velvet brush, they're quite tough, um, but most watercolor brushes would be anyways. Um, so feel free to just really go at it if you're not getting much pigment on your brush. So you can see there's loads of blue on there. So I'm gonna drop that into the yellow and I want this to be a pretty bright green. I don't want it to be too blue or too yellow, kind of like a nice, um, cherry green. I might just come pick up a little more blue. There we go. So you can always, if you, if you added too much blue, just go ahead and pick up a bit more yellow and add it into your green. And we want the consistency to be kind of like, like milk, really. Um, you'll notice that the paint isn't really it's it's not really spreading like if I if I move it around a lot it's not splitting if your palette is new sometimes you have it where the paint all kind of pools into one area and so you might have like a lot of white area um just don't worry about that too much if your palette is new especially and just rinse my brush off dab off some of the excess water. And then I want to add just a touch of cadmium red to this green mixture. And that's just going to kind of help dull it down just a little bit. Um, red and green are complementary colors. So the more red I add, the more kind of neutral this is going to turn. It would turn it eventually brown or gray. Um, so I just want to add just a touch. So just with the very tip of my brush, I'm just picking up some red. And if you can see, it's really tiny amount. It's better to add um, just little by little. So you can see, I just dropped that in and just kind of mixing it in. And it just makes it kind of a more realistic green. If I just left that as it was, it just kind of looks a little bit like artificial. So I tend to like to neutralize it just a tiny bit. And I'm gonna rinse my brush off really, really well. And I'm going to rinse it off in my clean water. And I'm gonna scoop this water into a new mixing area and we're going to mix our purple. So I'm gonna get my brush nice and dripping wet and drop it into the mixing area. And we'll do four scoops as well. I lost count there. <laughs> I will do one more. Four to five. I think maybe I already had four. <laughs> All right, and then I'm going to come into my quinacridone magenta now. Um, if you don't have quinacridone magenta, go ahead and use like a shade of pink. If you have one, um, alizarin crimson, if you have it, or even you can use straight purple. Um, I tend to like to mix my colors usually. Like I do have a, a violet here in my palette that I, I cannot remember the last time I actually used it. Um, I just find when you mix your colors, you tend to get a bit of variety. Like you can kind of see parts of this painting are a bit more 
pinky and some are more blue, you just get this like lovely variation in your purple versus using um, purple straight out of the tube. Um, so I tend to like to, to mix them instead. Same with my greens. You can see like there's a bit of variety throughout that as well. I'll just leave that there. All right, so I'm gonna come into my quinacridone magenta. Again, really load up my brush. It's just a little dry, so I'll just, there we go. Can you guys all hear the music? I like to listen to Spanish guitar um, while I'm painting. So I always have that on during our Just Paint classes. It's quite popular, it seems. <laughs> Everyone, I just turned it up a little bit. I just realized it was probably quite soft there. Um, but I always feel like it's such a nice vibe. I think it's a, the channel I've listened to. It is on Spotify. It's just relaxing Spanish guitar. And it's just perfect. Okay, so we have our quinacridone magenta. Rinse my brush off well and then come into the cobalt blue. Load up my brush. and mix up a lovely shade of purple. Again, we want our paint to be kind of a like milky consistency, um, not too opaque and not too watery. If it looks really, really um, thick, then add just a bit more water. Uh, and if it looks too watery, just dab off your brush and kind of go into your paint and you can mix more paint in that way. And that way you're not adding more, more water to your mixture. Come into my... So I noticed these flowers are kind of a, almost like a, not a pinky purple, but they're, they're more on the kind of the warm side, the kind of bright purple side rather than the blue side. So I'm just adding a little bit more quinacridone magenta than blue. So you can see this is quite a kind of bright purple. And I'm going to rinse my brush off really, really well. And then rinse it off in the clean water. And this time we're just going to scoop three brush brushfuls of water into our new mixing area. One, two, three. And then this time I'm going to use my cadmium yellow pale. This is just a bit more of a warm yellow. If you don't have like two different yellows or you don't have the specific yellow, that's totally okay. And um, use what we, you have. We're just mixing in orange now. So I'm just picking up some of the yellow and gonna drop that into my mixture. There's very little orange here. So I don't wanna mix, I don't need to mix up too much. Rinse your brush off really well and come into your red. And the cadmium red is quite strong, so I'm just going to add it little by little so it doesn't completely take over. Until we get a nice, beautiful orange. All right, and if you wouldn't mind, just letting me know in the chat when you have your colors mixed and you're ready to start painting. Uh, 
awesome. Thank you guys so much. Wonderful. All right, so let's jump in. So the way that we're going to do this, we're going to start with this flower on the left here. Come down and we'll do the flower on the right and then we'll add some of the lovely um, leaves at the end. All right, so again, so I'm just going to paint this slowly um, and kind of step by step, petal by petal really, um, so that you are able to watch me while I'm doing it and then follow along as well. And again, feel free to ask questions along the way if you have any. So I'm just going to make sure my brush is nice and clean. So I'm just rinsing it in the dirty water glass first, just in case there's any pigment on it. And then I'm rinsing it in my clean water glass. And then I'm just going to dab my brush off on my paper towel. I don't want to, I've already have my paint kind of to the correct consistency that I want it at. So I don't want to be adding loads of water now to this pigment. So I'm going to pick up some of my lovely purple. All right, and then we are going to start with these three front petals first. So kind of off, if you kind of roughly see the center and then come to the left of it, that's kind of where we are starting. So I'm gonna start with the petal to the very, very left. I'm using the tip of my brush. I'm going to do the edge of the petal. So if you even just make a mark like that, just with the tip of your brush to just get the jitters out. The beautiful, the nice thing about working with um, painting flowers and things from nature is that they are not perfect. There's loads of imperfections. So if you have a petal that's a wonk, ends up a wonky shape, um, that's totally okay because in nature it probably is a wonky shape. All right, so I'm just going to kind of create this side petal here just by pulling my brush to the side and then connecting it. So it kind of goes skinny, wide, skinny at a little bit of an angle here and just fill that in. You can even drop some stronger color into like the, the tip of it just by touching it while it's still wet. And then at the bottom part of it, See, I'm just gonna use my paper towels. I had a lot of pigment on my brush, so I just dabbed some of the excess off. Um, I'm just going to pull it down to kind of see where my, my stem is gonna go. And then now I kind of have a placement of where to connect the rest of my petals by doing this. So I'm gonna move on and do the next petal. So I'm gonna start kind of a little bit, just a little bit higher than if you're looking kind of level with this one, just a little bit higher and connecting it down. And I'm just doing that kind of outside shape of the petals first, like that, and then can fill it in. And if you do it that way, if you do the outside lines, make sure you go over the lines again as you're filling it in. Otherwise, you might end up with line marks. All right, and then we're gonna move on to the last petal that is in the front. Pick up a little pigment, tap some of the excess off, and then again, start at the top and pull down to connect it. Do just a little line like so. Okay. 
and just kind of goes skinny, wide, skinny. And if you just do the outline, just with the very tip of your brush, so you can see this brush does get to quite a fine point and is able to do nice little details like so. And then just fill it in. And again, just make sure you go over where you did the line so that you don't have an outline show up. Those are our lovely front petals. So I'm just going to, at the base of the petals here, I'm just going to kind of pull the purple down because it kind of comes down into the stem a bit. And then I love connections. I love when things um, blur and kind of blend. And so I have a beautiful connection here between the purple and the green. So I'm actually going to rinse my brush off, rinse it off the clean water. I'm gonna dab off the excess water because again, I don't wanna be adding too much water to my paint. And then I'm gonna come into my green. And while this purple here is still wet, I'm just going to touch it with the green and pull down to create my stem. Now you'll notice I'm doing small, like flick marks down for the stem. I'm not doing just the kind of one big solid line. So this kind of helps you create like a skinny, um, straight-ish line. So I'm just giving it a little bit of a, a gentle curve. About here. Like so. Rinse my brush off in the dirty water rinse it off in the clean water, dab off some of the excess, and then I just want to soften the bottom of this stem here. So when I go to add some of the leaves and stuff, um, it all kind of looks like it blends nicely. There's not this just harsh line. So while it's still wet, with a wet brush, a clean wet brush, I'm going to just touch the paper and come up to the green. And that just kind of softens the bottom of this here. Are you typically painting with the actual flower in front of you or from a photograph or just from memory imagination? Um, I kind of, I either paint from flowers in real life or from photos. I, I don't really paint from memory, but I do use photos. Um, I love painting from real life if I can get them. All right, so then I'm going to just make sure my brush is nice and clean. And I'm going to come into my orange here. I don't want too, too much of this pigment on my, on my brush. So I'm just going to really make sure that I tap some of this off um, so it doesn't spread everywhere. I really want it on the tip of my brush. Um, I don't want it to kind of go everywhere. So I'm going to add what will be kind of the center of the of the flower and it's kind of peeking out to the right of this petal here. So I'm just going to do, let me zoom in this part because it's quite small. So hopefully you can see this a little bit better. All right, so it's just, I'm just going to do some um, dots really with the tip of the brush like so. And I'm actually am going to touch the purple. So you can see some of that orange has bled into the purple, which I'm totally okay with. I love kind of some of these, those imperfect blends. I feel like with watercolors, it's kind of the thing that makes, makes them so beautiful and unique are things oftentimes that seem like mistakes. Um, end up just being adding interest and making them really special. Like you can see here how the purple and the green have just blended really nicely. Um, and that, that'll just create some interest there in that petal. So it's literally just a couple messy dots to the right of that petal there. 
my purple was already dry. Am I not using enough water? Is that when you added the orange? If, if your orange doesn't blend into your purple like that, that's totally okay. It doesn't have to blend. Um, mine just happened to be a little, uh, yes, with the orange. Okay, yeah, don't, don't worry about that. It, I mean, technically the, the orange center of the flower is behind this petal, so it, it doesn't have to blend. Um, mine just happened to be wet. No problem. Let me just close out just a tiny bit. Okay. Some small details here, so we'll make sure you guys can see everything. Okay, so the next thing that we are going to do is we are going to add these lovely back petals. And then the cool thing about these flowers, or some of them, is that the kind of as you get closer to the center of the flower, it goes nearly white. So we're really going to be doing kind of the outline and then adding some clean water really um, to get this kind of blendy effect of it being a bit lighter as we come towards the center. So again, clean brush, tap off some of the excess. I'm gonna pick up some of my lovely purple and I'm gonna do my petal here to the left. Uh, just be mindful if, if your petal is still wet, just don't place your hand on top of it. So I'm just gonna come a bit higher and kind of do a, a rounded line in between these two petals here. And I'm not gonna touch I'm just gonna kind of be careful to not touch these front petals because they are, they're almost dry and I just don't really wanna interrupt that, um, that kind of drying at this point now. So I'm just kind of coming, creating kind of a hook round like that. Keep this nice and wet, like make sure this purple line is wet. then rinse off the brush and with a clean wet brush, kind of pull that purple down and you can rinse it again as you get closer just to wipe off some of the purple that's come onto the brush. I'm kind of just hovering, I'm not touching these front petals, I'm just kind of coming down close to them. And that's how you can kind of create this lovely kind of ombre effect. And then I'm gonna come into my second petal at the back here and just connect it to that first one about halfway up it. like so. And again, just make sure this line is nice and wet so it doesn't dry while you're collecting um, clean water. Especially like, I mean, if watercolors are so easily affected by your environment. So like if you have the heat on, um, if you're outside and your summer really windy, like things like that will definitely affect how quickly your paint dries and your paper and stuff like that as well. All right, just rinse your brush off then to the clean water and pull with your brush that purple down. Rinse it again. And you can even touch a little bit the, the orange. Mine's, mine's pretty dry, so it's not really blending, but if your orange is still wet, you might get like a nice blend with some of these back petals. All right, and then we're going to do our last petal at the back here. So just to the right of this one, about 
halfway up again. Just gonna come up and then come down next to this front pedal. Just again, making sure this is nice, nice and wet and then rinsing my brush. Dabbing off some of the excess water and then coming in and pulling some of this purple down. I just rinse my brush a second time because then there's, there's so much pigment then that's on my brush. So I just wanna rinse it off. So then it kind of then, I'm not just pulling the purple all the way down. I'm kind of, I am creating that light kind of ombre effect. Like so. And so that's our first flower. Um, this one's quite open. The next one's gonna be a bit more closed. Um, but how'd you guys get on? How'd you enjoy doing your first flower? Any questions? The beautiful thing about this painting is there are two, so you get two opportunities to try it. So even if this first one didn't turn out, um, you still have one more. <laughs> And if it's not really working out, don't, don't put pressure on yourself to make it perfect. You know, that's not really what, what this is about. You know, it's really about enjoying the process of, of trying and picking up paint um, and putting it on paper and just kind of having, having fun with that. So just be patient with yourself and compassionate with yourself um, and just try to enjoy the, the, the kind of the process of it. All right, so we're gonna move on now um, to our second flower. We're gonna follow the kind of same process again. So I'm going to do these three front petals um, and then come down with the stem and then we'll do the back petals. So like I mentioned, this one's just a little bit more closed than the first one. Do you ever use a dryer in between steps? Usually not, I, I find that it tends to um, kind of dull the colors of it. If I'm in a hurry or doing like a big lands, like a landscape or something um, where there's a, a lot of waiting time in between layers, then sometimes I will, but usually not. All right, so I'm just gonna pick up some purple. I'm gonna dab off a, just a little bit of the excess. I'm gonna come a little bit higher and to the right of this flower. And I'm just gonna create a line. This petal is kind of side on. So just using the point of my brush and just in little kind of motions. I'm gonna come down. And just create a really kind of narrow petal this time. And then I'm, while this is still wet, I'm just going to then move on to my next petal. So this one's a bit wider than that one was and a little bit taller. So I'm just gonna come a little bit above that one and create a nice round kind of ovaly, almondy shape like so. And then fill it in and even when you're filling it in too if you want to just add a little bit of water just create like a little bit of variety in some of the colors shades of purple or the opposite wipe off your brush come into your pigment and just tap the wet area with the darker like with more pigment you'll see how it dried here have this like kind of lovely bluey tone. All right, and then I'll come over here to the right 
and finish off my last petal, connecting it just a bit higher. So you don't want it to be all the same. You don't want it to come down to the same spot because um, in nature things aren't perfect like that. So I'm just gonna make the connection just a little bit higher. And kind of round this, this side out nicely. Like so. And then come down. That purple's kind of dark. So I'm just gonna come into my more pinky tone. And just connect them. Like so. And I'm again going to just pull this down a bit. The purple does come kind of down into the stem. And then I just rinse my brush off really well in the dirty dish and then I rinse it off again in the clean dish. Wipe my brush off with paper towels and then come into my green. Dab off just a little bit of the excess here and then just connect it with that purple. And then I'm just gonna kind of curve this stem. So it comes, so it kind of ends near this one. And again, I'm just doing kind of small flicking motions instead of drawing the entire stem. And then I'm soften quite a bit of this one, especially this is a nice kind of technique to do, especially if you end up maybe with a wonky shape or kind of a fat area, like a part of the stem like looks a little bit wider than the top or the bottom. So I'm gonna rinse my brush off in the dirty glass, rinse it off really well in the clean glass, tap off some of the excess, and then I'm just going to soften this a little bit. So to do that with a clean wet brush, I'm gonna get the paper to the right of my stem wet. And then I'm going to kind of work my brush closer and closer to the stem until it touches the green and kind of spreads out. And I love creating some of this softness, some of this blendiness, um, and even tilt your paper and encourage it to kind of, kind of spread. So it kind of creates that blurred edge on purpose. And then again, I'm just going to kind of blur and soften the bottom of this here as well. So again, I'm just going to wet the paper below the bottom of the stem and then wiggle my brush up and touch the green. And that just kind of softens that edge. So then when we go in to add our leaves later, it'll be all nice and soft and look like we painted that part um, at the same time. All right, so next I'm going to come in and do my orange and then we'll add the rest of our petals. So I'm going to rinse my brush off, make sure I don't have any green on it. And tap it off with my paper towel. With the tip of my brush, just come into my orange. Sometimes you'll notice if you haven't used your colors in a while, um, they split a bit. So, so, so you can kind of see with the green, like if I stirred this green up, all of a sudden it would probably end up a little bit darker because the blue has sunk to the bottom. Same with this orange, I can kind of see that it's split. So you can just remix those colors up a bit with your brush. And then again, I'm just going to use the tip of my brush to create little dots just to the right, about halfway up on this middle petal. Like so. So it's just kind of like the middle of the flower just kind of poking out. I'm going to rinse my brush off 
in both the dirty glass and then the clean glass. So you can even see I still have some orange. So look at what look at what color my dirty water has become. Even my clean water isn't quite uh, crystal clear anymore. But this is quite gross. This has a lot. Well, it's not gross. I mean, it's paint, but this has a lot of pigment in it. So if I use this to soften the edges and stuff, um, you would actually see this color. Make sure I have all of that orange off, top off some of the excess liquid, and then we'll go ahead and paint the last three petals. Come into my purple. And in between these two petals, I'm going to do my first one at the back here. So it's going to be a bit taller than those ones and it's gonna come down in between them. So I'm not gonna to touch these front petals um, just because mine are still a little bit wet. Um, so just be mindful as well of where you're placing your hand. So I'm just gonna create a nice oval rounded top there. And again, just make sure these are nice and wet with paint. Rinse off. Dab off and then pull some of this paint down. Rinse off again. Dab off again. And you can just see how we create that beautiful kind of ombre. I'm going to move on to the next petal. So I'm just going to come a little bit to the right of this middle petal here. And then just coming down to where this right petal is. Again, just making sure that's nice and wet. Rinsing my brush off. Dabbing some of that excess off and just kind of wiggling my brush to pull some of this purple down. Just rinsing my brush off again and wiping it off. And then I think my orange, no, it's mine's pretty dry. So, but if you did touch the orange, you would have like a nice blend a little bit. If your um, if your orange is still wet, you could do that. Or what you could also do, rinse my brush off really well. If you do want to make that a little bit blendier, what we could do is just add a, just a touch of orange back on it. Um, just with the tip of the brush, we don't want it to go everywhere. So I'm just gonna tap off some of the excess and just kind of tap that, tap that in. And it just kind of blends out then into some of the purple. If you have too much orange on your brush when you do that, it might kind of really blend into the purple. I just think that kind of softness, it's just so, it's such a cheery, bright pop of color in the middle. I love it. All right, so our last petal is just a little teeny tiny peekaboo petal to the right here. So I'm gonna come into my purple and just shortly down from the top of this petal, I'm going to create a line like so. and create a curve that connects them back to that petal. Just creates a little peekaboo. And then just kind of fill this in. And 
not too worried about making this you know really pale at the bottom because it's only the very top of it that you can really see And those are our two flowers. And so the next thing that we're going to do, the last thing that we're going to do is just add um, some of these leaves and to just add a bit more green and a bit more fun. Um, the thing about watercolors is that they are very, very, very easy to overdo. So there's a thing called the 80% rule. Usually it's best to stop when you feel about 80% of the way done. Um, you know, just stop your painting maybe take a break, get coffee, or put it away for the night, come back to it the next day. If you still feel like it needs like a tweak or two, then go ahead. But um, usually you'll find that your painting is actually done. Um, if it's a little underdone, if it's overdone, then it, it can ruin it really. Um, so try to not go overboard with, um, with your paintings, but I mean, Easier said than done. It's very easy to go overboard with, with painting. But that's what practice is for. You know, not every painting turns out. Not every painting I do turns out. I have a huge box of um, watercolor scraps and paintings that did not work <laughs> at all. Um, that I am planning actually on turning into handmade paper and then repainting on. So my plan is to repurpose my my watercolor paper that didn't work out because um, this paper is expensive. So it is it, it is hard when it when things don't work out. You know, you've spent your time and and your money on supplies and things like that. So I know it can be frustrating. Um, and me telling you to approach your painting with a sense of just enjoying the process is a reminder for myself as well. <laughs> you know, it's easier said than done. But anyways, I digress. We will get going with our, our leaves and so I'm just remixing up my green I noticed that a lot of the blue kind of seeped to the bottom um so I'm just kind of swirling my brush around I would love a class on repurposing the paper with a new painting um I'm still figuring it out myself how to press paper it's tricky um but once I get the hang of it, I will definitely share anything I can. I'd be happy to. <laughs> All right, so I've loaded my brush up with green. And I'm just gonna add a couple um, leaves to the bottom and then soften some of that. So I'm just gonna use the tip of my brush as kind of the point. I don't even know if you call these leaves like when they're just kind of like skinny and like that but to me they're kind of leaf like so with the just the tip of my brush <coughs> excuse me i'm just gonna pull down and again i'm just using kind of a flicking pull down motion i notice it's a little bit dry so i'm just picking up a little bit more more pigment and going over it. I don't want it to dry on me too quickly. So I'm just pulling down. So these are wider than what the stems were. Like so, kind of coming down. Basically just creating a line. I'm gonna do one on the left here. That's gonna be a bit more curved. Sometimes it's easier if you do it quicker. Um, you know, just kind of use the shape of the brush and pull down. Just gonna add a bit. Go over that so it's nice and wet. You can even flick up a little bit. Have a little one like that. I'm gonna just rinse my brush off then. Rinse it off in the clean, well, what should be the clean water. Wipe off some of the excess. And then at the bottom here, I'm just going to soften this. So I'm just going to add clean water to the bottom and you'll see how that just kind of connects them. 
can even kind of come over the stem. See how that just kind of like blurs it all out at the bottom. Can even come like I said over this over where the stem was a little bit and add drop in just a little bit more color and then that just really creates connection between these leaves that we've just added and the stem that we painted earlier. So I'm gonna pick up a bit more green. I'm gonna come in between the two flowers here and add kind of a taller leaf. Kind of make it a bit more curvy. Doing it doesn't even have to be fully finished. Like you can see how quite undone um, this one is. Like it has a bit of a middle chunk missing. And then when I soften that at the bottom, I just think it, it just adds a little bit more interest and in, you know perfectly kind of shaped leaves. Don't worry about doing things perfect. It's really hard to let go of that desire for perfectionism, but it really doesn't create an interesting painting anyways. So and I'm going to come back into my green and just to the right here. Add a leaf. I'm just, I'm just doing small motions and kind of pulling down. Just make sure that stays wet, especially at the bottom. You can just tap it with col like more color. Just to make sure that stays nice and wet while we paint our last leaf and then we'll soften the bottom of those two at the same time. So this one, um, is I'm going to do like another kind of flick like this one. This one uh, is going to come to the right, which is a bit unnatural just to, to I'm right handed. So for me to kind of pull this way. So I'm going to do just the flick part first. And I'm, I don't really want them to be exactly even. So I'm just going to do the like the tip of it first. Like so. And then come around connect that and even connect the bottom of these two. Rinse my brush, rinse it in the clean water. And soften that, that bottom. Just drop in some green there. And then I'm just going to leave it. Like I said, it'd be very easy to go really, really overboard. Um, and sometimes it's really fun, you know, to experiment and do that. Um, but for this one, I quite liked the simplicity of the, the two flowers and a couple of greenery um, around it just to kind of frame it nicely. So that's the finished painting. Um, how did you guys get on with it? I'd love to know what you guys thought. If you have any questions, if you had any um, difficulties, or if there was any part of it that you really enjoyed. My color is separated, so I think I'm going to try it again. Yeah, definitely try it again. Um, sometimes as well, like, I think color separating just can create some interest in the painting as well. You know, it just creates a little bit of variety. So you might look at the painting later once it's fully, fully dry and realize that you actually like it. But yeah, definitely try it again if you want to. The blend at the end looks simple, yet mine looks nothing like yours. Sometimes that can has to do with the paper. So if you're using, um, like Arches paper is quite expensive and it, it does allow for a lot of nice blends and blending and stuff, but sometimes the cheaper watercolor paper doesn't blend um, the same way. So sometimes it does come down to, to the paper. That was a new way for me to paint leaves. I always try and use the shape of the brush, but I like this. Oh good, I'm so glad you liked it. I couldn't get my green as natural as yours, but I'll keep practicing on mixing colors. 
Yeah, definitely mix the colors. You could even take a little piece of paper and um, paint like little swatches as well, just to kind of get gauge what the, the color will look like. I'm probably redoing this tomorrow, but it doesn't look too bad. And my leaves connect connected too much. That's totally okay. I'm so I'm actually like really happy to hear some of you guys um, are gonna do this again. I think that is amazing. Definitely, definitely go for it again. This was so wonderful. I actually pulled some of the purple out onto the right of the right flower when I was pulling out the stem, but tried to clean it up. Yeah, if you have any, um, if you did kind of have any smudges, once it's dry, what you can do is either like with a wet brush, this does depend sometimes on the paper, but with a, I would actually replace this water before doing this if you want to too, but I don't know if you can see. Um, here, so if I just take my wet brush over it and just kind of massage it, you can see it's kind of, it was a very small one, but it's just kind of an example. You can use your brush, especially once it's dry and your brush is wet to kind of smudge it out like that. Um, magic eraser is also another like little tip of getting paint out, but be careful with magic eraser. Um, with just get it wet and kind of go over it. And it does actually erase the watercolor, but it can also damage the paper. So be very, very gentle. My colors are always very opaque and separate on the paper and they're, when they're dry, do I use too much water? Um, Laura, what kind of paint are you using? Um, Bethany, I, yes, I use Windsor and Newton um, watercolor paint. Even and perfect, just so, just so nice to create. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. Yeah, I think, I, I actually think if you come back to your painting, like give it, give it a day or give it two days, just stick it in a drawer, don't look at it and then come back to it two days later. And I think that you will actually have a different mindset of like, you'd be like, oh wow, I actually like how, you know, those colors are and, the, the orange is really nice. You know, I, I feel like you'll actually find that you do like um, a lot of the things in it. And if you don't, that's totally okay. It's practice, it's just for fun. Lara says, in pans. It could be the, um, it could be the, the brand. Um, it also could be that they're just a bit too dry. Um, what I would do is maybe make sure to get your pans wet like a good 10 to 15 minutes before painting the next time. I hope you enjoyed creating this painting with me today. You are amazing and I'm so glad you took this time out for yourself. Remember, you can always practice these techniques and revisit this painting again. In fact, I encourage it. If you have paint left over in your palette, you can use it even after it's dried just add water. To clean your palette, just wipe off the mixing areas with a damp paper towel to get yourself ready for your next painting session. Creating more paintings is what's going to help you learn and grow in watercolors. I'm so looking forward to our next time painting together.